What's going on, everybody? It's Starman 3, and welcome back to Survival Virus 35. Here's the thing. I'm not going to play this one in this episode, but this time, this is a special episode. Take it away, Recap Man. He's going to play it for you, so... Hey, hello, everyone. I am Wingcap Man. You might be surprised to see a video of mine here. <laughs> and uh, to be honest, I don't blame you on that one. So, a long story short, Starman Dree told some people around, including me, that he wants to do some videos with surprise guests. You probably have seen a few videos of those roaming around on his channel. And it happened that he asked me to join in for a video. And here I am, I guess. <laughs> um... So, this video is more of a showcase of Super Mario Bros. 35. Like, the way how you can play as Luigi. We probably do a match or two just to confirm that stuff works as, as intended. Because sometimes I struggle with just my controller inputs. Doesn't matter what kind of controller we use. So, first things first. Um, for the people who don't know about this yet, which I will be surprised about, what, but whatever. Super Mario Bros. 35 is a battle royal kind of game where the last man standing wins. You send enemies to people by killing them and you gain time by, well, killing the enemies of course and knocking all the players out. It sounds really easy. Concept-wise, it is easy, but it gets really intense because the longer the match goes, the faster the timer gets. Okay, so for Luigi in this case, like, you don't have to change your icon to Luigi, but this is just my main icon in this game. So we are going to course practice just to make sure everything works. So, in this case, I have unlocked every single level and I actually have beaten them as well. So, the requirements to actually get Luigi working, you have to do that. You have to unlock every level and you have to beat them. And, and let's go back a little bit. So, about, about uh, the level... You have to be at least level 100 from what people told us around the internet. I'm not sure if that's required, but it feels like the worlds, uh, the, all the levels are re required. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so for Luigi, you have to hold down the L button once you have done all of this. Let's just choose a very simple level, just to show off, I guess. If you press the L button, it, it, it has to be the L button, because the X button and the L button does the same thing, but it has to be the L button, the Z, L or Z, L, wherever you live. Do not work, it's only with the L button. So in this case, from this point, we are holding down the L button, we proceed, and we can let it go here. And you place Luigi. Easy as that. So yeah, that, that's the way how you play as Luigi. Um, Let's see what else we can do with him. Well, nothing special really. Especially if you're small and just on the course practice. But this is just for the course practice. So on this screen, it, it loads the level instantly, right? If you proceed, you just go straight into the level. For a special battle, because we are not uh, allowed to change our power-ups, if you hold the L button here, and then go to the next 
screen, like in this one, you can release the L button here and you play with Luigi. So as long you're on the screen before this waiting lobby, you have to hold down the L button and go to this screen. And on this screen, you just can release it. Easy as that. And for this special battle, it's all about coins. So it's nothing really that special. So we might end up dying because of a really fast timer. Because as said before, the timer can go really fast eventually. So it gets really difficult. It looks really simple, and as you can see, all the great enemies are the enemies that are sent by the other players. As you can see, the combo in keeps in wow, the jump. The combo keeps increasing your time like that. Same goes with stomping them. With stomping, it doesn't reset back to plus three or plus four, depending what kind of enemy. Um, now, what, what kind of enemy you are stomping on? Because if you throw a Koopa shell against every enemy, then yeah, it, it resets it eventually. I don't really know why Arika and uh, Nintendo have done that. What's the reasoning behind it? I don't know. We are not gonna send Hammer Bros because they get really annoying. Wow, oh, the Hammer Bro really had some fun over there. <laughs> I do like how all the enemies actually interact with the trampolines. That wasn't in the original. They just could interact with them like they were solid blocks. Oh, I didn't hold the run button, but for some reason he did run. That happens sometimes. So this game has some tweet, uh, tweaked physics from the original Super Mario Bros. game. So it's not purely one-on-one -on -one as you are used to. He didn't do crouch jump, but that's okay. We are still alive. So it, it gets a little bit... Uh, with time consuming when it comes to getting used to this game, especially if you are used to, if you used to be one of the Super Mario Bros. speedrunners, you will notice right away this game feels pretty different, even awkward at times. I mean, it, it kind of is. I don't blame them with that kind of mindset because it still kind of is. So if you walk really slowly and try to turn to the other way you accelerate like in reverse speed like this it's insane it's insane you have to get used to that i skipped a bossy beetle i actually want to jump on it so you only have to just interact with the enemies by jumping or killing them in order to send them to the uh, opponents. So it's, it sounds pretty easy like that. But the reason why I didn't throw in the Hammer Bros towards the enemies... Uh, let's say Hammer Bros are really, really annoying in this game. And y you will think, oh god, the Hammer Bros were already annoying in the original game. Oh, believe me, you haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> See, just like that. He just goes straight uh, t uh, through these brick blocks. They like to do that. Uh, I didn't jump, that was my own fault. <laughs> I jumped way too early. When I was in midair, yeah, that doesn't work. At least you get to see some real Luigi action like this. So, about Luigi's physics, no, Luigi's physics are not changed. They are just like Super Mario Brothers. Um, yeah, it's not like from the last levels or 
Super Mario Bros. 2 in Japan. With, uh, with the really difficult ones that we never get outside Japan until the virtual console. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm throwing for content here. He didn't jump. Okay, so this game also has some issues with eating your input for some odd reason. That was a perfect example because I clearly pressed the jump button. Sadly, you cannot see it because I don't have any tool to showcase my controller input while it's connected to my Nintendo Switch. I might get one of these USB Type-C splitters that, that it can recognize both uh, both systems plans but meh <laughs> so there are a few glitches in this game that are also an original but most of them are actually patched out like um, like crouch jumps if you're big and you hold down uh, the D-pad down, then your hitbox in the original game goes to just one tile, like as if you're crouching, but having this visual that looks like you're just looking up. In this game, uh, that hitbox has been fixed. Yeah, and the hammers actually still give damage. That's why they're just only holding the these stupid hammers. So that's a one more annoying thing about the Hammer Bros. Uh, we're not gonna do that. Goodbye, Hammer Bro. So the timer goes as fast as in the original game, pretty much. Like right now. So if there are like five players left, then it goes like this fast. And it goes even faster if it takes too long. Uh, it gets in a red timer eventually. Basically, it changes the color of the timer. As you just saw with the Koopa shells, by the way, you probably have seen it a little bit earlier. If two Koopa shells collide into each other, they just break on them each other. If they are into each other, like on the same tile, like it, it kind of looks like they fuse together. Um, they actually get killed together, which is pretty funny to see. But at the same time, it it gets really annoying, especially on place like. You can get two Koopa shells here, and you are expecting to just see one of them. Uh, yeah, you just run straight into um, the Goomba. <laughs> you are holding that stupid hammer, Hammer Bro, come on. Also, what this game has as a new feature, if you have noticed yet. This block over here, if you press the X button or the L button, whatever works for you. Um, you pay 20 coins to go through a roulette. And what that roulette does is it changes your power up. Sometimes you can get a star out of it, which is nice in some cases. And in some other cases you get a power block. Which is unique in this game. So every enemy that's on the screen, it gets simply destroyed. Which a power block kind of does. Like in Super Mario USA or, you know, the non-Japanese Super Mario Brothers 2. So it's one on one right now. Let's see how great this play is. Sometimes you can get hit by the plant if there is an enemy over there, right inside the plant, like that. 
I did not expect to have a plant on the staircase. That kind of sucks. We skipping that uh, fire flower because that only wastes a little bit of time. Because there's one over here. I'm getting these coins. Oh. Normally I fall down at uh, the coin on the right. And then hugging one of these brick blocks. Okay, you know what? Let's destroy my opponent real quick. If it's possible. Okay, don't jump again. I died there like at least once because he didn't jump like that. And he fell down. He fell straight down. Stuff like that can happen. Don't blame your controller. Blame this game's server. Because I never have this in practice mode at all. It's only whenever I actually play against other players. So this game itself doesn't lag, which is great. Especially um, the fact that this is kind of a Nintendo game. Like you would expect it from Nintendo that there is just some lag. Because of the networking is pretty uh, poor. But yeah. This game runs really smoothly. Wow, I actually KO'd the opponent. I didn't expect that. <laughs> so my time on rest pretty low. Normally I have way more time. Because I play faster and less safe. Normally. So there was more of a showcase like how you can play the game. Yeah, my opponents weren't that great. I'm sorry, people. For the ones who were in this lobby and see this video. I'm sorry, but I just wanted some more skilled players. <laughs> Eventually, you all get really good at this game. I started as a scrub as well. You people eventually become a pro. Without doubt. So, special battle changes pretty quickly. As you can see, it goes until October 26th. And this video is made in, well, October 24th slash October 25th. Because of a different time. Um, so, this is just a themed battle. Sometimes a special battle starts with more coins. And it starts with uh, a super mushroom. In this case, it's just coin grinding. You start small. Um, the reason why you start in 3 2 is because of really easy time gains. So, like in 3 2, you have this green Koopa shell, you kick it around. You get more time like that. Because right at the beginning, no one is going to send you enemies. Eventually, you can build up until you have maximum time. Okay, so the regular 35 players battle, however. You can choose whatever level you want to play. And it gets added into a queue. So you play against 34 other players. You are like the 35th player. Just as uh, easy count. Um, if you are really high level, like I am in this video, um, let's say I choose seven one. If almost everyone is on a high, on a lower level than I am, then my level actually gets around last place. So, if there are 10 people, like level 1 players choosing 1-1, one, one, then these get voted really quickly. While the one I chose gets uh, chosen really late in the game, if we still survive that is. Because sometimes you really don't get to play your own level. Which is a shame sometimes, but at the same time I'm glad that it's the case because I've seen people starting in 83 and 84 um, at the time we did that 
most players, first off, they didn't expect it. And secondly, we weren't that skilled yet with specifically these and starting small. Also, in the public lobbies, as you can see, the Super Mushroom, Five Flower and the Star cost coins, which goes off from your coin counter in the bottom right corner. We're not gonna do that. We want to play with Luigi. We're holding the L button. We stay small until we get a power up mid game. And we're gonna vote for whatever we want. So there are some strategies. 1-1, um, one, one, well, most of the time you just start in that one because most players are voting for it. However, despite being one of the easiest levels, it's not really the smartest to play on. If you're low on time and people are spamming enemies at you, then it's a pretty decent level. I still recommend 3-2 over 1-1 for this when it comes to enemies. 1-2 uh, has a lot of coins. If you are one of these coin grinders, 1-2 is pretty good. It, it has around 92 coins, I think. And there is a chart from this. The most coins is 3-1 with 101 coins. 2-1 uh, also has a great amount of coins. 4-2 as well if you don't use the warps. You can use the world, uh, world 5 warp at the end. Because at the end there are just no coins. Unless you go over the ceiling then you skip uh, 10 coins at the end. 6-2 uh, surprisingly has... A lot of coins too despite not having a one-up mushroom one-up mushrooms give you 20 coins in this game i think you have noticed that while well, you've seen me playing this one by now but just to clarify other levels like uh <laughs> well let's just say the castle levels don't vote for them and try your best to avoid them if possible because World 1-4 and 6-4 only have 6 hidden coin blocks, which is stupid. 4-4 four, four, and 7-4 have 0 coins, which is also stupid. 8-4 has 1 coin with the hidden coin block. And you can keep going for infinite coins like that, because it's a maze level. You take the wrong path and you're at... Uh, at that hit a coin block again that you can bash open but don't do it it wastes a lot of time so i don't recommend that um yeah for the rest it's just we have one two two one three one uh four two oh yeah five two is also one of them because of the coin heaven and that's kind of it. Alongside with 6 2. Yeah, that's kind of it. 7 1 has a lot of ball bills. And let's see if we can get a ball bill party going. And we release the L button. So as soon as the screen fades into the screen, you already can release it. Because that screen is already loaded. So you don't have to hold it in until you get to the countdown or something. As long as the screen fades in, then you can release it just fine. There are some strategies when it comes to grinding for coins, but requires a lot of great players. In this case, I'm not planning or I haven't planned to play against other great players right now for this video that is sometimes we do the we gather great players together so that we can get really long matches going and get an insane amount of coins so we have this jackpot uh, thing in the bottom right corner of our uh, of the screen 
sometimes or most of the time people call that a coin chest. If people die with coins, about half of their coins get into the chest. And if you knock out someone who has coins, I think you get at least the half of it or quarter of it. I'm not really sure about that kind of calculation. I'm sure other people can explain it better than me. I barely pay attention to that. Um, yeah, nothing really special going on as of now. It's just easy peasy for me. Some people might struggle with this game because of sad physics. I said before, the physics are just a little bit different that it makes really awkward jumps sometimes. So we're gonna use the warp zone. So if we use that other pipe, we might have ended up in one tree, as you uh, can see in the bottom right. We skip that and we go in one one. J just as an example, you basically skip one level instead of skipping worlds. So everything is just shovel. You like to see that, don't you? <laughs> so this game has an animation glitch if you throw a fireball at a uh, specific moment. And of course with a certain amount of speed. And if you keep bouncing on enemies, then it looks like you're walking in midair. It's a really funny animation glitch. It takes some practice, but I have to be honest, it took me just like three to four attempts to finally understand how it will work. I want to do a crouch jump. We are skipping Bowser, so yeah, uh, Bowser can spawn on your end as well. I do recommend skipping Bowser altogether whenever you have the chance. Hmm. Wait, did Bowser just die with four fireballs instead of five? In original, sometimes that can happen actually. Killing the blooper because we want to be really annoying opponents. <laughs> I also could have kicked a Koopa shell against Bowser. That will be a much better example how that will look like. So if you kick a Koopa shell against Bowser, um, Koopa shell doesn't last after that. It gets killed alongside with Bowser. It's because of Bowser's weight, and Bowser's weight is just heavy enough to break the shell. Bowser is one heavy boy. <laughs> oh, we get four too, that's nice. Getting the three pity coins, there we go. So, most players would go for uh, the warp zone over here, but I'm not gonna. Also, bloopers in this game are really strange. So, if you're standing still, you can kill them. You can kill them that way, however. I have to kill this Bowser, it's in my way. So, I'm grinding for coins over here. That was way too close. <laughs> Almost hit a cheap cheap. Cheap cheeps are really awkward in this game. You would expect that 2 3 and 7 3 aren't really such terrible levels. Well, in this game, they are. No one wants to play on that one. Because the cheap cheap. Um, the cheap cheap's gravity. Their levitation. They are way different. And they do have orangey seeds. 
The RNG seed just changes every single time whenever a cheap cheap spawns. You cannot really uh, manipulate it uh, unless people have found out how to do that. But uh, as of this video, I haven't found it yet. And that's what happens if you kill Bowser with a Koopa shell. Mm, goodness. <laughs> oh, that's a busted beetle. <laughs> I'm so blind. <laughs> Not killing the bussy friends, no. <laughs> killing Bowser. Sure, why not? Oh, oh well. We get one four. Oh, <laughs> that's a bussy beetle. No. <sighs> yeah, good luck avoiding that though. And you die, just like that. I didn't expect that Bowser still was walking towards us. I have to be honest on that. So sometimes you just have bad luck. You hate to see it. You also can spectate players if you die. I totally didn't do that on purpose or something. <laughs> just for the showcase. So... For targeting people, by the way, if you use the left analog stick... I'm using that one for spectating now. But if you do it mid-game while playing, um, you can change your target if you're like using random, for example, or I think most coins. It can be done specifically, I never use this. Some people do. The reason why I don't use it is because, well, firstly, I use the D-pad to walk around and it's really getting annoying if I constantly switch between the left and low stick and the d-pad. Right now I'm using a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. So you might be thinking, wait, but that's not really that annoying. Well, for me it kind of is, because it's not kind of grip and technique I'm used to. On the spectate screen you can't really do much, just only, well, spectating. As it should. Okay, the player is getting the invisibility frames. Um, and if you press the plus button, then you can check this again, I guess. So if you start small, you always get a small Mario bonus. I always go for these because you get more coins that way. So if there are a lot of players targeting you and you have set yourself on attackers you actually send all the enemies you kill to all the people who are attacking you. Which is great in, well, most situations. However, it can backfire really quickly. So the reason why I don't want to kill Hammer Bros most of the time, if it's set on attackers and there were like 8 to 9 players targeting me. If they all kill the hammer bros, you guessed it, it will multiply for me. Because I kill one hammer bro, I send it to 9 players, I get 9 back. <laughs> Same goes for Bowser, it's for every single enemy. So you have to make sure that you have some strategy behind it. And this player right now is stalling a little bit because uh, they can stall what they want. This player has way more time. So the reason why some people are stalling on screens like this is because you don't get any enemy, especially in bonus areas like that. And, well, you have to pray still, 
that uh, that your opponent has really low time to make it a little bit more difficult for them. But that's also called playing really me. <laughs> so we go out for this one. Because, well, uh, there's nothing else really to show, only to spectate players. Good games, by the way, for the people who were in this lobby. And for... Well, oh yeah. So, for options, there are very few people who are actually using the NES Switch controller. The one that's currently attached to my Nintendo Switch. There was a problem with using the, uh, those controllers. And the problem was basically just this. This is the default settings you get when you start up the game for the first time. Just change to this. Because what happens here is... Um, you only can jump but not run. Which sucks. I mean, it is a challenge, I guess. But it makes stuff really difficult, and for some sections, even impossible. Let's see if we can do something with the course practice. Just not running. I'll just show an example how chaotic it can be when being small. And... Um, no, I shouldn't do that. Okay, so forgery is one perfect example that you really want to run. So, on purpose, I'm not gonna run. I'm only gonna jump. So, we have those red Koopas, right? We are actually required to use them now. Otherwise, you cannot make that jump. I'm not joking. Yes, you can do the double jump in midair in this game. You're welcome. <laughs> so most players will probably die right at the beginning because of the red Koopa jump. I'm not holding down the run button by the way. Sometimes it just happens that you're running. I really... You know, I wonder what's causing it. Sometimes you just run while not holding the run button. I want to know what's actually causing it. Hmm. Maybe it has to do with crouching or something? Yeah, see? It does it again. Oh, it's about the landing! Okay. Ah, but you can run if you do it that way. Ah. Oh, that's really difficult. Okay, so... Yeah, I'm not holding down the run button. Th that was entirely done without using the run button. So, there are a few frames. Once you land, well, most likely after crouching and then falling off. Once you land on the floor and you jump at a certain amount of frames, you actually gain, well, as, as they call P speed, so maximum run speed. That's interesting. Well, the more you know, that, that's one extra thing for this video, I guess. <laughs> yeah, for everything else, I think I have shown pretty much everything. So like you have the stats, and uh, well you can see how much I've been playing at the moment I made this video. Um, continuous enemy defeats, uh, that's about bouncing on the enemies. So single shell defeats is just kicking one shell and 
defeating everything on your path. While continuous enemy defeats is just floorless lava, you bounce on the enemies just with one jump or one fall. Single superstar defeats or starman defeats. It's just for one star. If you get a second one, it resets. However, your your time bonus that you get won't reset. It's only just for the streak. For enemies beaten, um, <laughs> goodness, my goombas. Um, yeah, everything that's on your path, you can kill them just fine. So lava bubbles or put a boo for some people out there they're called lava bubbles screw you <laughs> so the way how to defeat them you can defeat them with a star you can defeat them with a power block if you get them out of the item roulette but you can also kill them with shells so for example in 3 4 at the first uh, section you have two of these fire balls the lava bubbles and then three fire bars for just that one section alone most of the time you are just fine over there just don't take too much time to have a koopa by luck over there because opponents have to send you these enemies however there are some places where you can kill the lava bubbles in 4-3 way easier if there are Cooper shells so don't bother about that first section just play safe over there and you will be fine unless you are a crazy player like me or of course other players yeah you never see it coming <laughs> um, th there's also one problem with screens like these so the X button well, you know that the NES controller doesn't have an X button. You cannot change it with the L button. So you're stuck on just this. You can do this, however. Just fine with the shoulder buttons. You just cannot sh uh, switch over. But yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. So to unlock icons. So you have to unlock all of these. You start with really easy one small regular mario and every time you unlock something it's just shuffled so nothing is in order like for me for example my last ones were actually toad and princess toadstool it's not peach yet come on people well some players ended up getting um Let's say the dying Luigi icon. And I think the last icon you will unlock. Well, it's not a specific one, of course. It's shuffle. I think the last one you unlock is around level 155. Sounds like a lot. So it's level 55 star because one star is level 100. And yeah, everything is just shuffled. So it's just own preferences. For me, it's the jumping Super Luigi. And then the fact that you can play with Luigi is just ridiculous. I do like how they never told us you can do this. Until someone pointed out that you could hold down the L button at a certain moment. Like the screen you just hold the L button and proceed most people still didn't know how to do it so I made a small tutorial for that just for you all with that being said um this is pretty much it you do have the leaderboards which is nothing really special you can see the leaderboards changing every single week. Like this current week, at the moment this video has been made. I'm uh, ninth place. That's pretty nuts. Yes, I know. 
Um, but yeah, it changes weekly. So if you're one of those great players out there, gather some great players together. And then you can get insane amount of coins. Like for this one example, I'm really low. That's because I haven't played with really good players around this week. However, one week earlier, <laughs> yeah, let's just say this whole coin count is actually legit. I have seen the uh, score that Engage got like live. A cosmic stream. It was nuts. I haven't seen Engage run like his whole run, but I've seen the results live, so it's just legit. So there are strategies to earn a lot of coins. So be aware of that. You can play this game really mean, but you can also team up together to actually win together. Otherwise we didn't get so many coins. Like the week even before this one. Yeah, shocking isn't it? <laughs> it's insane. Like, of course that run with the 21k coins was really nuts. We had like 20 players in the red timer. 20 players were still alive from the 35 that was that was insane that was one of the matches from well that week of course we will see what will happen for the rest of the time this game will still be alive because without doubt we are still learning new things about this game and this one was the very first week. That one was also pretty nuts. So the first week and the second week there were hackers. They tried their best to just send bloopers and uh, other enemies like from the start to everyone. They also used cheat codes that they could swim everywhere but I don't see the point honestly. The bloopers, however, was actually great. If you think about it, bloopers might be one of these really awkward enemies to hit, especially to bounce on. But if you don't move and if you lure every single blooper that's on your screen to one specific point, then I don't see the problem. Then you just can bounce on them every single time because eventually you will create an open spot. So people, stop complaining and get good. Like really, it's not that difficult. <laughs> but yeah, of course they also hacked uh, coins. So if they died of or they won, uh, the coin count was like maximum 99,999. It can go higher than that. However, if we have in total 35 amazing players in one lobby, we all get in the red timer, we all get at least uh, 1,500 coins. And we go even further than that. That one specific player KOs almost everyone. Dude. Like, that maximum is actually possible. I'm not even joking. It, it sounds unrealistic. But there are some cal uh, cal uh, calculations made that it's actually possible. It, it is doable, but it's really unrealistic as of now. Because even the pros do make mistakes. And we need to have one hell of a run that everything works as intended. Just like this run. Really engage if you're watching this video. That week was insane. Thanks for joining. Especially with all these great players alongside. And without Cosmic, we didn't do this. So shoutouts to Engage, Behance, Syndac, Zimbo, and last but not least, Cosmic. Thanks. And of course, Control Head. 
Uh, how did I not include Controller Head? So Controller Head is also one of these great players. I'm not sure if he is actually in this list. Or on this list. But Controller Head is also one of those players who is insane. For me, Controller Head is actually better than me. That's my opinion. He's that good at this game. Congrats, dude. So, with that being said... People, if you're still watching, thanks for watching. And Storm and Tree, thanks for letting me join in for this video. Hope it was helpful enough for everyone. If there are still questions, feel free to ask. Whenever if it's in the YouTube comment section or a discussion section or on places like Discord or even mailing people. Just go ahead. You can find me everywhere because my nickname exists since 2004. I'm pretty sure you can find me. <laughs> so yeah, people, thanks for watching and see you all next time. Maybe in another surprise video, but without doubt this won't be my last video. So have a nice day everyone.